Yes, here we are. Steve here from The Varied Life. And today, <sighs> resin printing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, resin printing is pretty cool because you can print stuff out of liquid and you can make some cool figures and paint them up and do all kinds of neat artsy stuff. I got, you know, a little, little, little few things going on. I just did a video that I dropped uh, about a minute, minute and a half, maybe showing all the stuff that I need to paint. But it's a fun, fun little hobby. I have the Elgu Saturn III Ultra, which is really nice. And of course, just like everything else, uh, there's always the next iteration. And that's what we end up hearing is rumors of the Elgu Saturn IV Ultra, the next evolution in resin 3D printing. And there's been so many recommendations uh, in the resin printing community about what users want in a resin printer and Elegu decided to work on that and, you know, acquiesce to uh, what some customers and uh, people have been wanting. And so it ends up, there was a rumor going around that Elegu dropped uh, or was leaked the Saturn IV Ultra manual. And if, if you check um, Facebook and Elegu, uh, in a number of days they're going to release the new Saturn IV and the Saturn IV Ultra. So, anyway, I did some digging around, and I actually found the manual. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Saturn IV Ultra manual. And there's a picture of it. Of course, it's a drawing, but uh, it looks like it's pretty good. It looks like down in that bottom, um, bottom right ends up that that could be the display screen. I think instead of having a display screen in the middle, we've got some kind of, you know, cosmetic little thing that goes from the left and kind of a Y and a bottom Y in the top and something dissecting the center of it. I don't, I don't really know. So uh, it talks about, yeah, I mean, this looks exactly like an Elegoo uh, model or manual. Uh, it talks about cleaning process. All of this stuff is similar. And here is the packing list. So we have the Ford Ultra has a Wi-Fi antenna, which we kind of figured, has a build platform, which is a raised platform, we can see there. It also looks like it, it cinches in somehow. There's no longer this set screw bolt with a knob on it, so, you know, <laughs> there's no longer that. And then the resin tank, uh, that's kind of interesting as well. I wonder if we can zoom in here. Yes, we can. Oh, yes, we can. Uh, so, with that, we can see that the Wi-Fi antenna, we see the build platform or the build plate, and that ends up having, like, it fits in there, and then it, it has some spacers, and then it has the build plate itself, which is pretty interesting, considering uh, that it's probably self-leveling, and it al already came leveled from the factory. So, other... Uh, resin printers have gone and companies have gone and done this as well. And we also have the resin tank. We can see that it's got a lot bigger lip on both sides to pour resin out of the vat and get it into the bottle. So that's kind of nice instead of just having the uh, little, little tiny thing. I really wish the vats on resin printers, usually you'll have a max fill line and then you can kind of guesstimate, you know, halfway and like the Saturn III Ultra, it ends up, it holds 500 milliliters of resin. And so about halfway down, you know, there's kind of a line that goes around the rim or goes around the inside that is about 250. But in all honesty, I really, really wish that the bats would hold more and that there's more markings to show, you know, I, I wish there it would hold a full liter, you know, and then go to 750, 500, 250, and then, you know, there. This is other interesting thing here is an AI camera. So uh, before there's, there wasn't any cameras, you know, doing resin printing. So this is going to be kind of interesting. Hopefully, for God's sake, hopefully it is a good quality camera. Um, I mean, I've got a, what kind of camera have I got on this thing that we're filming on? It is a, a C920 HD Pro webcam. And so, yeah, it's it's pretty good webcam. It works out, and it's like 60 bucks. But unfortunately, a lot of resin printers, I haven't seen any resin printers with cameras. 
So this could be a first, maybe a second, but regular FDM printers have cameras, but they are woefully, they're terrible. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, you ought to just be able to buy a good webcam off the shelf, kind of like what I'm using here, and boom, get it. Uh, resin tray, I'm not sure what that is, flash, gloves, funnel, backup screws, power adapter tools, and all that. Here is really interesting. So we see that the Wi-Fi antenna is still on the right-hand side, but it's on the back of the right side. Lord, why, why can't the Wi-Fi be on the back like everything else? And then why is the USB and the, and the power switch on the back of the unit? Put the USB, the power switch, any other connections, put them on the front of the device, kind of like microwaves, stereos, TVs, every other electron, my printer that I have here. I'm, I'm trying to print out a little, you know, thing here so I can paint my Mandalorian Grogu guy. All of the, the all the buttons are on the front. Why does Elegoo and why do all of these companies not put the power button on the front of the machine? I don't understand. And why do you insist on putting the Wi-Fi on the right side? Granted, it's closer to the back, which is nice. The, the Wi-Fi is closer on the front on the S3 Ultra. But uh, still, just put put the USBs and the power connectors on the front. Put the, the Wi-Fi on the back. It's that simple. Uh, what do we end up seeing? Number one is the Z-axis. So it's got that, of course. Two is a handle, which looks like it's a flip-up handle, which you flip it up and then it releases the build plate, which is number three. Number four is the LCD screen, which is where... Oh, that's the top LCD screen. So the screen that allows the UV light to come through. That's what we're talking about. Five is the resin tank. Six is the AI camera, which is off in this corner here. So that's nice. So you'll be able to see your prints. And Lord, I've had some failed prints. And unfortunately, when the vat is so far down and in the beginning of the print, it's hard to tell if the print is good or not. So you have to wait about halfway through and then you have to come back. Uh, really hope that that camera is connected up to a network so that you could monitor your print. So that way, if you if it comes up and you see that the print had failed, you can just go ahead and stop the machine. That would be really nice. Uh, seven is the screw knob. Good Lord, seriously? We're still doing screw knobs? Uh, you know, there's been a number of machines that have had actually latches where they, they flip down and connect on to the... Uh, my, that was weird. Printers making all kinds of noises, uh, but yeah, the the screw knobs. This is the four ultra. This is supposed to be the creme de la creme of Elegoo resin printers, and we're still using screw knobs. I don't get it. Why why not have kind of a flip down thing like some other ones have? All, other companies have already done kind of like with the build plate thing. You know, a little flip up thing. Put your build plate. Flip it down. It holds the build plate there. You ought to do the same thing with the vat. Seriously. Elegoo. I... It's the same thing as on my Saturn 3 Ultra. And then we have the touch screen, which is in the uh, bottom right-hand corner. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, we got that going on. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, we've got the same thing. It's got an anti-UV cover. It has Wi-Fi antenna switch which is your on and off switch a dc socket again power why are you putting the power on the side of the machine why can't it be like a tv why can't it be like a microwave why can't it be like my printer where all of the power connections are on the back instead of the side because lord forbid that you want to save space this way from side to side and just plug it in the back, put the put the Wi-Fi in the back, and it has an extension port. Hmm, extension port. Oh, that's going to be for your for your USB. Well, there's a USB interface, is three, and then five is the extension port. Hmm, we have an extension port. I wonder if that's going to be used for anything. 
So, um, cheetah box slicer, USB Wi-Fi, MSLA stereo lithography, light source with a Frenzel culminating lens. Uh, XY resolution is 19 by 24, Z axis, blah, 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 power, yeah, yeah, dimensions, packet size, gross weight is 17.5, net weight is 14.5 kilos, which is nice. And, uh, oh, here we get some test printing. After inserting the build platform into the connecting block, press down the handle to secure the build platform to the connecting block. The build plate is capable of self-leveling and ready to use right out of the box. That is awesome. Not so awesome with the VAT that you still have to do screws. Um, I just don't get it. Model printing uh, slowly add the resin into the tank. Resin level is not less than one third of the tank volume and does not exceed the max line. The machine will perform a self check before printing. Do not touch the machine during the self check. Okay, so it looks like it's got auto leveling. Model processing after the model is complete. Wait until the resin on the build plate stops dripping, then lift the handle to take out the build plate. Use a scraper. Same old, same old. Okay. I would have thought maybe they would have something where you could angle the build plate and have it drip, but I guess not. You just old school. Cheetah box. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Software. Yeah, we know that. Network management. After, this is interesting. So after the printer is connected to Wi-Fi, open the slicing software and click the globe in the upper right-hand corner to enter Network Management Center. You need to download and install Chidu Manager for the first time. Cheetah Box Pro. And of course, I have Lychee. Of course, when I tried Cheetah Box and I got the Pro version, it wasn't working with Mac because it had a bug in it and it wouldn't do all the bells and whistles that I was paying for. And I was the very first person to experience that bug and I'm like, hey, well, it doesn't work. <sighs> you know, not all the bells and whistles, so what are we going to do? And they're like, well, you know, you can just keep it, and when we fix it, we'll let you know. And it's like, but I'm paying for something that I can't use. You know, all the bells and whistles. It's kind of like kind of like buying a car, and, and the radio doesn't work, and the windows don't go down. Yeah, the car still works, but there's things that you paid for that should be working. So I went with Leachy uh, Pro. So anyway, we see that... And then as a management center, which you can add your device. Good. And then the printer interface, you can turn the camera on to observe printing in real time. Now the question is, you can also control the time-lapse photography function and turn it on or off. That is cool. But is it going to be reliable? There, there are some 3D printers whether they're resin or FDM printers have come out and they, they have the exact same thing, a network capability where you can monitor and some of those companies, their stuff sucks. <laughs> so, so hopefully hopefully this won't suck. Uh, let's see what else we got up here. Don't use sharp tools. Keep the room at 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, grease your rod every two to three months. Don't use a printer. If you don't use a printer in the next 48 hours, please pour out the remaining resin back into the tank and seal it well. If there's any residue, use a filter to filter to get it out. Release film is wearing is a wearing part. Please replace it regularly as the machine prompts to ensure success rate of printing. So, seems like there's some kind of automatic tracking of how well that FEP is on your bat, and it will tell you to replace that. Careful when removing the print platform to prevent damage to the LCD screen. The, life, the screen has about 2,000 plus hours and will decrease with increasing printing frequency. Uh, clean daily, unplug the machine in time after printing. If there is a screen exposure problem, yeah, okay. Email support, and uh, yeah, I think that that is what we end up having. So, very, very interesting what we have here with the uh, Saturn IV Ultra from Elegoo. And we see it's going to be uh, going to have some network operation to it. 
we see that the resin tank still has screws. Seriously, I would have thought they would have left that behind. The build platform looks kind of interesting. I'm wondering if it has, has holes in it to help with that. Uh, AI camera is kind of interesting. Self-leveling is what we see. Network capable. View your print. Do time lapse footage and so on and so forth. Of course, this is after I bought my, my Saturn 3 Ultra. But it looks pretty interesting. It looks pretty interesting. At least they got the handle for the build plate is a flip down secure type of thing like some other companies have been doing. And yeah, the auto leveling which, with is what it looks like. It's it's auto leveling and that's done at the factory and it is what it is. So that could be good. That'll definitely be helpful for new people. Uh, yeah, other than that. Yeah. Flip up lid, which is nice. I don't see a handle on it. Of course, it's only... Which is, is kind of odd. You would think there would be some type of, of, of handle, like a sleek metal handle on the front that you could lift it up. Or maybe, you know, sleek metal handles on the side so that you could lift it up. Something like that. Um, but now you're going to get your, your greasy fingerprints all over the, the cover there and you will notice them. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, hmm. Doesn't talk about anything about heated chamber. Doesn't mention that. Of course, this is only uh, uh, part of the manual, or this is a manual. Uh, I think it, mine came with like two, and so there's some other stuff included. Uh, six is extension port. That's for like air, for venting and things like that. But let's zoom in on that. Let's see what we can see. Okay, the lift up lid, that looks kind of nice. There's the Z, there's the camera, the knobs for the VAT. The VAT looks a little bit bigger. Could be bigger. That could hold some, that would be nice. Because there's a number of items as you start printing and you you get ballsy and you want to print larger and larger things requires more resin and then of course you have to pour more resin in and honestly I thought I the Saturn IV Ultra I thought there would be an automatic resin filling capability but there's not and so there's the Saturn IV and then there's the Saturn IV Ultra so if this is the Ultra was which it says it is um, yeah, I am, hmm, interesting. I, I real, I honestly thought that the next iteration would have, uh, automatic resin filling of the vat and draining of the vat. I would have thought maybe it still has a chamber heater, maybe it has a, a heated vat, but I don't see anything that indicates that. I don't see anything that looks like a heater or heater vents. Uh, maybe it heats from the bottom. Kind of like the uh, Uniformation GK2. Kind of does that. The heat comes up from the bottom and goes into the vat. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. I still don't like the fact that the Wi-Fi antenna is... Seriously, really... It's on... It's, the Wi-Fi antenna should be on the back. The power cord connector should be on the back. The power switch and the USB switch should be on the front, like right, right down there, right down on the bottom there. That's where it should be. The power switch should be right there, right next to it should be, or have it up here or here, uh, probably right down there. It'd be good to have like a power switch, like dead center of that, just below that. And then right next to that, your little USB slot, if you use USB anymore. Uh, personally, I use the USB. I've, I have done stuff wireless, wirelessly, sending prints from my computer to the Saturn III Ultra. It takes a while, and it goes faster with the USB. So, I don't know. It, it, the Wi-Fi doesn't really bother me. The only thing I use the Wi-Fi for is just to hook it up, and with Leechy, I can see that it's still printing, and it will give me an update 
in regards to the percentage of the print and how how much time has it, or how much percentage has expired. So if the print is 2% done, 50% done, or whatever it is, it'll give you that percentage. So you can do the math and then that's it. Uh, so yeah, there it is. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, new, new size of build plate. We see that there's no adjustments, there's no screws or anything like that, so that definitely indicates that it's self-leveling. But yeah, that is the Saturn IV Ultra 3D printer. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with this and if the printer itself has any other bells and whistles. So we know it's got a camera. We know... Let me adjust this so I can put my feet up and lean back. Um... So we know it's got a camera, so you can monitor your prints. Auto leveling, we know it's got that. Mm, seems like it has a larger bat. Those three things like there, we don't, doesn't say what the build volume is. Seems like it's bigger, uh, which would probably be a good idea because really, uh, what is it, the, the frozen Mega 8K or whatever is, is probably the, the big boy on the market. But, yeah, I, I would think that Elegoo would have, have wandered into that territory of having a larger printer and with a larger build plate. So it'll be really interesting to see what the dimensions are for that build plate. And if we go back here... And again, once again, I don't know why that camera thing just doesn't work. Um, that vat looks a little bit bigger than what we see in the Saturn III in the same manual. So I'm going to take a wild guess and say that the vat holds more. Build play area. Mm. I would say that's bigger just by looking at the build plate on the Saturn III. Uh, matter of fact, let me go get that. I'll be right back. I will be back. And here it is, the build plate. So, this is the build plate for the Saturn III Ultra. And as you can see, um, what we see on that screen and the picture of it seems to be bigger than what this is. And so, obviously, that could be a good thing. Because that definitely looks like a, a larger build plate. Uh, just by looking at this you know, and saying, okay, well, what does this look like? And then taking a gander at that over there, it definitely looks like a larger build plate. So that is going to be interesting. Now, of course, I'm sure Elegoo and whatever else, uh, you know, whatever else they end up doing, like most, like most companies, uh, will harp on the fact that, ooh, it's a new 12 or 14K or... You know they'll 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 tout some great resolution, and the guy named Faux Hammer he does reviews and it does some awesome incredible reviews. I'm just in, in awe of people that are able to, you know, to be YouTubers and and have tons of followers and get people to send them stuff and to review it. That just man, that's just kind of awesome. Um, <laughs> I, I'm open to that, uh, but yeah, I think that would be really cool. But yeah, that build plate definitely looks bigger and hmm, could be interesting, could be interesting. But again, we'll find out. I think it ends up, it was like eight days from now or something like that, where I saw something on Facebook. Let me see if I can find that. Let me close that out. Let me get back here and we'll go there. 
and let's search for Elegoo. Elegoo. Six new. Da, 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 da. Okay, here it is. We're going to take a look at this. And boom, there it is. They are advertising on April 15th, which is today's the 7th here in Korea, uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Mountain, UTC, Saturn IV, and the Ford Ultra. Speed, provision, precision, and simplicity. Those are, the, those are the things that are popping up. And we can see that's kind of featured there. We got a picture of the camera, which is what I thought. Uh, here is, let's take a look at this and see what that looks like. Yep, that's a build plate with the thumb screws. Seriously, thumb screws. Ah, come on, Elegoo. <laughs> Ah, oh, seriously, why, why? Let's see what else we got. What other neat pictures? That looks like the front somehow. Oh, that's part of the case. So that's the, the little thing we end up seeing. Okay, it kind of made sense. And yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens in regards to their new printer, the 4 and the 4 Ultra. Honestly, I I would have thought that the 4 Ultra would be the creme de, the creme de la creme, would be the printer that had all the bells and whistles, the heated vat, you know. But again, <laughs> some disappointments as well. But, you know, with the auto leveling, that is that is a huge improvement right there. And, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Nope, didn't win anything there. That's what I got, the, the three. So, anyway, yeah, that's what we got going on. So, with that being said, Elegoo is coming out with a new printer. That is really interesting. Uh, there was another printer that I thought was really, really awesome, but unfortunately, it is pretty expensive. And, what did, uh, and it was the, no, it's not Fohammer.com. It is Fohammer, The Bamboo of Resin Printers. The old... Uh, here we go. Let's just go ahead and share the screen. Yeah, little YouTube adverts. Blah, blah, blah. So anyway, in this thing, it ends up... It is the UltraCraft Reflex Review that he did. And this printer ends up being sharp. That thing is super nice. I love it. And it's got so many good things on here. Like I said, the build plate is pretty decent size. I would say that the Saturn IV Ultra, look at that, hay gears. It's got the flip down, similar to hay gears. Why they didn't do that with the VAT, I'm not sure. Looks like they've got the auto leveling on here. But yeah, I mean, it just ends up there's just so many cool things. And that they, they got their own wash and cure station. Let's see, what else? So, yeah, and they have the flip-up. See it? They've got the flip-up latches on the left and the right for the vat. Seriously, Elgu, you couldn't just copy what Hager's did? I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just crazy. Let's see what else. Now we're going to get a commercial. Blah, 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 blah. No, it's not a commercial. We continue on. So build volume 192, 121 by 220. Okay. That is kind of interesting. So yeah, it'll it'll be 14K. Yeah, okay. But where the Ultraflex actually goes is incredible because they're 
their auto support system actually works. It is just incredible. Uh, amazing on how that works. But the problem that they have is they have their own resin and it's proprietary. It's in a resin bottle cartridge thing that you put into the UltraCraft Reflex. And it's great because everything is tuned perfectly. So you just put the bottle in and it automatically fills the vat and so on and so forth. It's just auto supports are just incredible. And it ends up, but the problem is you can't add third party resin. Some people have already tried it, and uh, yeah, it's just, so it works if you have similar type of resin, but honestly, uh, I get they're trying to make money, but their resin that they have is like, yeah, look at the prices there. That's per liter. So let me back that up a little bit before it clicks off. So normally, a bottle of resin is about $30. 25 to $30 is usually what we see. We can see up here that their ultra print production for miniatures is $60. So, so while, it's, while the machine is perfectly tuned to the resin, so you just put the bottle in, you know, shake it up, put the bottle in, and you're good to go, you're spending three times as much, you know, $65 for their POW 10 ABS. Ultra print modeling is $89. They got another one down here. Ultra print molding is for $99. Colors for $89. And then ultra print production, $60. If I can buy resin for $20, $25, why that? And I can't use third-party resins with their machine. That just doesn't seem, uh, they're missing the mark. And they have, they have expensive, it's an expensive machine. So we'll take a look at that. That thing is just kind of crazy in regards to the price. And Ultracraft Reflex. So it's $1,400. And yeah, $1,400. And then you're looking at buying... You know, they got the wash and cure station, which you could do that, which is the combo. Uh, yeah, this is, I think it's like $2,500. Yeah, $2,300, about $2,400 for the wash and the cure and the machine itself. But really, just get an Elegoo wash and cure station. It's like $170 and you'll be good to go. Save, save yourself some money because you're going to need it when you buy the resin. But yeah, it's... Uh, I, I would be totally interested in buying this machine if I didn't have my, my Saturn III Ultra. And the fact that it's $1,400, uh, that, that's a huge chunk, but it's got auto leveling. It's got all the bells and whistles. It, I don't think it has a camera, but all the niceties that you would want, and but you can't add third-party resin. So, I you know, that just that's kind of the killer there for me. So anyway, that's what we've got new on resin printing and that we see with the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra, the new manual that's come out. And while it's got obviously some improvements for build volume, the build plate area looks bigger. The vat looks bigger, which is nice. Uh, we see real-time monitoring. It has a camera. That's nice uh, if you're away from home and you could stop and start your print. Uh, if it's failed, then you can go ahead and, and, and do that. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I'm, it is what it is. It'll be interesting to see, see what happens with all of this. And, uh, let me get my, myself off of there twice. So that's what you end up having. And, uh, yeah, just a little heartbroken that they still use the screw knobs on the Saturn IV Ultra, that the Wi-Fi antenna is still not on the back of the machine and there neither is the power connection plug should be on the back of the machine like every other electronic device on the world, just about, except for resin printers. Um, power switch needs to be on the front. USB needs to be on the front. It makes you wonder if, if maybe it would be worth hacking and uh, doing a DIY, extend the switches, the switch, power switch, and USB underneath the Saturn III, or even the Saturn IV or the Saturn IV Ultra, because I just don't see the need of plugging something in 
on the side, turning it in, turning it on on the side, in the back, which was worse than what the resin three, Saturn three is. At least the Saturn three, it has the power switch, Wi-Fi, USB, all of that stuff is further close to you on the right side. At least you can reach it. Um, seriously. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But other than that, I'm pretty excited to uh, see new new stuff come out. And again, that Ultraflex from Hay Gears, that their auto supports, what, from what Fohammer and other people have been have been showing, that the auto supports actually work. So no longer will it be this, you know, so much time putting in manual supports and adjusting and painting and this and that and trying to get your unsupported prints printed. And if it fails, then you got to go back again and change some stuff. Seems like Hager has got the, the market cornered and it's only going to get better. That's the crazy thing. So... Yeah, somebody needs to do some industrial espionage with, you know, hay gears and learn how to do what they already know how to do with those auto supports because that is incredible. But yeah, that that will come about soon. I think that will come about even more and more as we continue on through time. So yeah, that's it. Um, that's going to be the video for day for today. And I'm pretty excited about that. Probably won't get that unfortunately, because I just got my my Saturn III Ultra. When did I get that? That's, it hasn't even been that long. Let's see, let's take a look at the photos. My photos. And we'll back up. And we'll go, might as well share the screen, show you what's going on. Uh, so there's all kinds of pictures of me. There's pictures of minis. The gym. There's my that, that. Printed out those guys. There's my espresso machine. Printed out more dudes. That was the first print. And that was back in December. So December 8th is when I actually got my first good print. The first one was pancaked out. But yeah, December. So December, January, February, March, April. Five months and they already came out with a new they're coming out with the new just how fast technology runs is incredible so anyway that's what we got going on unfortunately i don't know and i was gonna hold out but i really needed a hobby to do and i was just tired of spending uh you know so much money on warhammer figures which are insanely expensive uh, and resin printing is just so insanely inexpensive. <laughs> uh, that's why I pulled the trigger. I went with the the three Saturn three Ultra because I thought, yeah, it'll be a while before you know they do anything with that. You know, it'll probably be a year, year and a half. No, <laughs> it's like five months. It's like wow, I don't know. So anyway, that's what we got going on. Um, but that's it. That's the, the newest thing that we've seen are those two printers, uh, which are really awesome. I think the, the Ultraflex, if they would allow you to add third-party resins, I would seriously consider getting that after about a year or two <laughs> and, sell my, and sell my 12 uh, Saturn 312 Ultra or 3 Ultra. I would, I would sell that to get that. But the next thing on the list of stuff to buy is probably going to be an FDM printer. So filament printer, 3D printer, that's probably what we'll look at and we'll take it from there. So that's all we got. So put comments, suggestions, tips, what do you think about new printers? What are some of the things, if you're into FDM or resin printing, what are some of the cool things that should be added to the new printers? And uh, yeah, I'd be like, I'd like to, to read those comments as well. All right. With that being said, it is now, it is quarter after 10 here in Korea on the seventh Sunday. So tomorrow's Monday. Got to go to the gym and hopefully you guys and gals will enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.